possible bow to the last one eighth of the bow. <coughs> Of course, likes to jump. Yeah, um, we tend to tilt the bow. For the second beat, they just wait until the beat is over. Then twice. Many times you'll see they start pressing with the index finger. Yeah. Then I tell them to lift the index finger up. They can really only use the speed. So we want to separate these three items. And when we practice bow speed, we don't want any additional pressure on the string. And that's very important because later on in the repertoire, they need to know what tool am I using? What, what sound do I want? And there are, of course, a million gradations in between. Um, and they may get to two per beat or, or four per beat. Same thing with pressure. Now, in this case, the bow speed stays the same, and one beat goes to the middle with pressure, and then pressure lifts. Yeah. The pressure is applied with the index finger against the thumb. Um, I believe that this is really the only pressure you can put on the string. Um, it's the lever between the thumb and the index finger. The idea that you use your arm weight is nice because it makes people relax. But physically, it's not true. <laughs> yeah, so I hold my violin and put my arm weight on it. What do you think is going to happen? Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, so this, this is pressure and the both speed exercises without any pressure. And both of those we do with the metronome. The last one we do without metronome, the sounding point, we go from the fingerboard all the way to the bridge and back. Two beats for bow. Pardon? Two beats for bow. No, no rhythm. Okay. No rhythm, just a slow bow. And um, the mirror is the best friend. Um, if you watch that in the mirror, they can make sure that the bow stays parallel to the bridge. In other words, the elbow controls the sounding point. Yeah. Even all the way to the tip. If you want, you can start explaining on the G string. That is the farthest extension for the right arm. Um, if you keep that extension on the E string, you're off. Um, I don't know if you can see it here. So if this is straight, if this is not. So each string has its own degree of extension, has to do with the curvature of the bridge. And the only way to really practice that reliably is to stand in front of a mirror with the strings absolutely parallel to the mirror surface. So if the back wall in this room is my mirror, um, I can see a right angle in that mirror if the strings are parallel to the mirror. If the strings are this way at a 45 degree angle, there's no way I can tell. Yeah, so that's uh, something I have a big mirror in my studio and people spend an awful lot of time in front of it. <laughs> <laughs>